Friends, I am Dr. Amdekar. In this video, I am going to address the problem of hidden symptoms. These are the symptoms which often the patient themselves or the parents of sick children overlook to report to a doctor and often such hidden symptoms totally mislead us into the final analysis of diagnosis. The most common hidden symptom relates to the origin of the problem. Friends, especially in an acute viral infection, as simple as that, it's likely that few hours prior to the reporting of a major symptom like high fever, the patient feels uneasy, feels tired, feels loss of appetite, and hours later, he develops a high fever. Well, it all happens within 24 hours and therefore the onset is not a problem to decipher. However, in a subacute or chronic illnesses, a milder symptoms such as not feeling too well, feeling unduly tired, feeling loss of appetite or sometimes even a loss of weight, are the symptoms which are often overlooked to be reported and the patients often report to a major severe symptom such as maybe uh, onset of high fever or a severe abdominal pain. But much prior to such a happening, there are vague symptoms likely to go on for even days or weeks. These are hidden symptoms. Friends, therefore, Whenever a patient presents with a first symptom, it's always a good idea to make sure that the patient has been absolutely normal prior to the onset of the first reported symptom. And unless you ask up front this leading question, whether the patient was absolutely all right, was active enough, energetic enough, eating well, carrying on all the day's routine as well as before, sleeping well, normal bowels and urine. I think unless you completely ask up front all such questions, you are never sure whether the acute onset of symptom reported by the patient really relates to a subacute or a chronic disease. It's not rare for me in my practice to have a patient reporting onset of high fever, but prior to such an onset of high fever, there are often vague uh, low-grade fevers, feeling a bit warm body or not having adequate energy. And we know that this has been a subacute or a chronic problem ultimately being reported when the symptoms become much more severe and the parents or the patient themselves often overlook such mild symptoms. This is a very, very common hidden symptom and even today the postgraduate students start presenting a case with a statement that the patient was apparently well prior to the onset of disease. Friends, let's get out of this term apparently well and make it sure whether he was genuinely well. This is very, very important, otherwise it would totally mislead the diagnosis. What are the other often hidden symptoms that patients themselves rarely report, especially when they are confronted with some major symptom? And one of such symptoms is a constipation. French constipation is a very common symptom in the community and large number of people in the community tend to be constipated for varieties of reasons. And I'm sure one of my colleagues have had a discussion on his aspect in his video. Well, unless you ask up front how is the bowel pattern of a given patient who may have approached you for a very different reasons, maybe a fever and cold and cough, or maybe whatever other symptoms could be. Always make a point to ask whether his bowel pattern has been 
fairly normal because when constipation is easily overlooked to begin with and reported often only when it becomes severe it's often too late to control constipation effectively same is true also about many personal issues related to common patients who may present not with such symptoms but these are the hidden symptoms for example one should always ask about whether a given patient for whatever reason has come to you is having adequate intake of fluids and is passing enough urine occasionally he could be passing a lots of urine and polyuria is easily overlooked and not even reported same is true about the sleep pattern for example large number of people in the population at all age groups seem to be deprived of a proper sleep quantity or sleep hygiene or sleep rhythm surely we all know that a good sleep is a prerequisite of good health and make a point to ask every patient for whatever reason he comes to you just to be sure that he has had a good sleep pattern a good sleep hygiene a good sleep rhythm which ensures that he is keeping himself pretty healthy same is true about the behavior friends it is very easy to miss an early autistic behavior unless you try to find out in details how the child behaves and same is true about the population at large in all age groups where today depression is becoming rather a common symptom feeling frustrated at times feeling useless feeling hopeless feeling no initiative of doing anything in life could be a very important symptom of a behavioral disturbance of a disturbed mental health and it's very important that such things are asked for up front by all of us as doctors and therefore it's important to ask for the bowel movements the urine output a sleep rhythm behavior pattern and also about the diet in general friends most of the population in our country is micronutrient deficient some of them may be obese taking in lot of calories maybe lot of proteins fats but even then they could be micronutrient deficient and it's important to find out whether they are taking adequate vegetables and fruits so that they get enough micronutrients friends these are the hidden symptoms patients don't report them to you but as a doctor who is not only concerned about the disease management for which the patient report to us but we are also responsible for a general health maintenance of our patients and we have already looked at this topic that a doctor must be a health promoter rather than just a disease manager and i thought such hidden symptoms should be upfront asked for in every patient that you see in your practice friends it gives you a good feeling that you are looking after their own health lest they are not aware but you as a doctor are very much aware of such common problems in the community and you need to guide your patients especially the growing patients the children the adolescent young adults and i think we need to really care for their health and therefore i thought these hidden symptoms are very important but friends there are some other hidden symptoms also in the minds of the patients or sometimes in the mind of parents in particularly mothers who have sick children there is always a fear or anxiety of what may happen even a simple viral infection like an influenza or during covid pandemic that majority of us got well without any problem but there was always a lurking feeling of anxiety or stress in the mind of the patient 
whether he would be the next person getting into complication out of such a simple viral infection might get into ICU, may never come back at all. Such kind of fear or stress or anxiety, at times self-pity, self-blame, why has such a thing happened to me when all others are fine? Such problems in the mind are never reported out to doctors and we as doctors should be aware of such problems and address them. Address the mind of a patient whose symptoms of fear or anxiety or stress lead to ultimately a sub-inferior kind of an outcome of a given physical problem. Friends, therefore I thought in the end of our analysis of symptom that we have been doing it for last eight or nine months, of symptoms of hidden origin, the hidden symptoms are equally important. I hope you keep this in mind and continue to be with us. In the next video, I am going to sum up all that you have heard in the last six or seven videos, which really address the topics which the super specialists often see, but we generalists see them first even before they land up with super specialists. Thank you very much.